Hello, my name is Christoph Stopka, and I am one of the developers of Prisms Fatigue. Prisms Fatigue is an open source fatigue analysis tool built on crystal plasticity finite element simulations. It is a collaborative effort between the University of Michigan's Prisms Center and the Georgia Institute of Technology. This first video is part of a tutorial series on how to execute the Python scripts to generate microstructures, calculate and volume average fatigue indicator parameters, and finally to plot and analyze the data. We will first discuss the workflow of Prisms Fatigue and identify the five different Python scripts. First, polycrystal microstructures are generated using the generate microstructures.py script which calls the open source Dreamy3D software. These microstructures undergo crystal plasticity finite element simulations in Prisms Plasticity, which is also a part of the Prisms Center and has its own tutorial videos. Local micromechanical response from quadrature outputs is used to calculate fatigue indicator parameters, or FIPS, in the calculate FIPS.py script. These FIPS are volume averaged over various domains, such as entire grains or subgrain regions, in the volume average FIPS.py script. FIPS are then compiled to create plots. One plotting capability fits FIPS to extreme value distributions. This enables the rank ordering of different types of microstructures based on their resistance to fatigue. Another powerful capability of Prisms Fatigue is the generation of a computational multiaxial fatigue gamma plane. A gamma plane considers an array of possible multiaxial strain states and magnitudes, and is vital to component design engineers. Each of these five Python scripts have their own associated video tutorial to guide prospective Prisms Fatigue users. As mentioned in the previous slide, Polycrystal microstructures are generated using the open source Dreamy3D software. It has the capability to generate microstructures that vary in grain size and shape, crystal graphic texture, crystal structure, phase, and other aspects. Most commonly, ensembles of statistical volume elements, or SVEs, are generated. On the left, sample microstructures with elongated and equiax grain morphologies are shown. Three common face-centered cubic crystal graphic textures are shown on the right. These combinations of grain morphologies and textures are investigated in the associated Prisms Fatigue manuscript. Additionally, Dream3D is able to incorporate experimental data such as electron backscatter diffraction, EBSD, or from high-energy X-ray diffraction microscopy experiments performed at synchrotron sources. The fatigue crack formation driving force is modeled using fatigue indicator parameters, or FIPS. Many different FIP formulations exist, which model different fatigue damage mechanisms in polycrystalline metals and alloys. The Fatemi Sosi FIP shown here is commonly used to capture the fatigue crack formation driving force due to intense shear along slip bands, with the contribution of the stress normal to these slip bands. Another type of FIP is the grain boundary impingement FIP, which considers the accumulation of irreversible plastic shear strain at a grain boundary and the stress normal to this grain boundary. In these simulations, FIPs are computed at every integration point and must be subsequently volume averaged for two reasons. The first is to reduce the effect of mesh sensitivity. The second is to reflect the physical damage process zone in which fatigue crack embryos form. The following slide will discuss the different FIP volume averaging schemes available in Prisms Fatigue. Previous work investigated the relationship between the crack tip displacement range and a crystallographic version of the Fatemi Sosi FIP in homogeneous single crystals and cracks lying at the interface of a slip band in a single crystal. The two were shown to correlate closely to one another, which advocates the use of this FIP as a surrogate measure for the fatigue crack formation driving force. Prisms Fatigue has the capability to average FIPS over various domains. The simplest scheme averages FIPS over entire grains. 
However, grain size follows a log normal distribution and comparing FIPS averaged over different size grains may skew analysis of the data. A more refined strategy is to average FIPS over bands. For instance, the face-centered cubic aluminum alloy investigated in the Prism's Fatigue manuscript models crystallographic slip on 12 slip systems and 4 slip planes. Each element of each grain is assigned to four bands representative of these slip planes, as illustrated here. A crystallographic version of the Fatemi Sosi FIP is then calculated and averaged across these bands. However, the bands may still vary excessively in volume. For instance, bands in the center of the grain on the right are larger than the bands at the edges. A more sophisticated approach is to consider subband regions. Prism's fatigue users select the number of elements in each subband. In this demonstration, subbands consist of eight elements. This mitigates mesh sensitivity and provides a consistent FIP averaging volume for the most appropriate comparison of FIPs from different microstructures. Subband averaged FIPs are the focus of this framework, but users may average FIPs over any one of the three volumes described here. After FIPS are computed and volume averaged, they are fit to extreme value distributions. Prism's Fatigue has the capability to fit FIPS to both the Gumbel and Frechet extreme value distribution, also referred to the type 1 and type 2 distributions. The description shown here relates to the linearization of the Gumbel distribution. Data from a true extreme value distribution appears as a straight line when plotted in this manner. For an ensemble of statistical volume elements, the single largest subband averaged FIP in each grain is determined. These are compiled for the entire set of grains in the ensemble. The top FIPs are then plotted to the Gumbel extreme value distribution, in this case the top 50. The plot here shows the highest 50 FIPs from the largest microstructure instantiation simulated in the Prism's Fatigue manuscript with a relatively high R-squared value of 0 0.976. The microstructure that was simulated contained 160 elements cubed and a total of 41,000 grains. The final capability of Prism's fatigue is the generation of a computational multiaxial fatigue gamma plane. Engineering components often undergo complex multiaxial states of strain but most fatigue experiments are performed in uniaxial tension. The gamma plane was first introduced by Braun and Miller and is shown here on the left. The upper and lower limits correspond to uniaxial and equibiaxial states of strain, whereas the abscissa corresponds to pure shear. The abscissa and ordinate represent the max shear strain and the tensile strain normal to the plane of max shear, respectively. The ISO life contours indicate the combination of strain state and magnitude for a given fatigue life. The gamma plane allows component design engineers to evaluate the fatigue life of their components. Conversely, a component may be sized based on a desired fatigue life. A gamma plane with ISO FIP contours for aluminum alloy 7075T6 is shown on the right, as generated in the PRISM's fatigue manuscript. A suitable calibration can relate these computational isofip contours to fatigue life for design engineers. In this first video, we discussed the five different Python scripts and reviewed the general workflow of Prism's Fatigue. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you will return in the next video, in which we will discuss the first Python script, generatemicrostructures.py. Please see the video description section for links to the GitHub page, the Prism's Fatigue publication, relevant references, and to the Google Group for user support.